Hello and welcome to this week's Force.comcast video where we're going to talk about the use of the transient keyword in Apex controllers. So about a month or so ago I did a advanced Visual Force webinar where we discussed page performance for Visual Force pages and one of the tips that was given in there and also mentioned in the blog post around it was uh, to use the transient keyword in your controllers um, to help kind of reduce the size of the view state. So I just wanted to do a quick demo here of showing you how that can make a difference and the type of difference it can make when you have um, a slightly bigger volume of data um, and just to talk through it a little bit. So what we've got here is two pages, um, one which is called Advanced Visual Force Pre-Transient and one which is called Post-Transient. And the two pages are exactly the same. And what we have in the background is a pair of controllers which have the only difference being the use of the transient keyword. So all the page is doing is having a contact, which we're just going to use the account ID field on here to give us a nice Apex input field. We then have um, an account and some contacts, and we're going to display the account information here, and we're going to list out the contacts. And then we've got a method here, retrieve information, which is linked up to that button. And then when we hit that button, if there's an account ID, we're going to retrieve all of the contacts. Well, we're going to retrieve 200 of the contacts, and then we're going to retrieve the information from the account. And that's all it does, really. It's very, very simple and very easy. So what we're going to do is we can run this, and we're going to call S-Force. Um, so the S-Force account we've got here, it's got a large number of contacts, um, 200 or so on. So we choose S-Force, and we hit Retrieve. And this goes away and it loads up the information for us. Now, if we click the view state tab here, uh, we can see that the view state is 11.86 kilobytes. It's quite a large view state um, for such a simple page. Obviously, it's nowhere near the limit, um, but it's just interesting to see. And we can see here that the controller itself is taking up 29% of the parent. It's quite a large controller, um, it's the bulk of it really. And you can see that the contacts list itself, the 200 contacts, is 74% of the controller. So it's a you know, fairly large and substantial chunk. So if we go now into our post-transient controller, uh, controller, what we've done here is we've marked both the account and the contacts as transient. Now what that means is that when we do the uh, page request, um, that information will not be stored in the view state. So the view state is an encrypted set of information that is kind of put on a hidden field on the page. Um, and so whenever we make a page request and go through the uh, cycle for doing that, it goes away and it takes all of the information that is needed to reconstruct the view or the state of the current view uh, in our MVC uh, framework. And it compresses it, it encrypts it so that it can't be read and uh, used, and then it sends that backwards and forwards. So Salesforce has a limit um, on the size of this view state. Um, and obviously, the bigger the view state that you're passing around, the slower your page is to load because it has to serialize it and deserialize it and has to reconstruct your controllers. So marking items as transient means that they don't get passed around the view state. So it's for items that you don't need between multiple requests. So for example here, we can mark the account and the contacts um, both as transient because we don't need them in the, between the different requests. Every time we make a request, we're going to have a new set of accounts or uh, a new account or a new set of contacts coming through anyway. Now, um, something to note as well is that I've done the queries here on two different lines um, in both the controllers. That's just for readability as part of this demo. And you could have them as um, a single query to make it slightly more streamlined, but for just reading out in the demo what's being done, it's easier. So, yeah. So, mark them as transient and let's see what difference that makes. So, if we go now onto our post transient page and if we again choose S Force and retrieve the contacts. Now if I click on the view state, it is going to be, uh, hopefully it's going to show the page. Where's the page gone? So the view state is not showing up as we wanted it to anyway. Let's see if that works. Yep, so the view state is now only 8.63 kilobytes. So we've already knocked off uh, about three kilobytes, which isn't a massive amount you know, in terms of actual data size, but it's quite a fairly large percentage. So yeah, uh, three out of what was effectively 12 is about 25%. When we go down now to the controller as well, you can see here, the controller is only 5% of the overall um, request, overall view state size, uh, whereas previously it was, uh, what, 29%. So we've reduced that quite a lot as well. 
And what this means is that our page will just render a bit quicker and re-render a bit faster as well. So it's an important thing for you to know about whenever you're writing um, a Visual Force page with an Apex controller or controller extension behind, you should really pay attention to whether or not you can mark any of your variables as transient. It will just make the page um, a bit snappier and a bit easier to work with. And it will mean that you don't have to worry about getting towards that view state limit um, because you're far more or less likely to hit it. Obviously, the less data you send backwards and forwards in requests, uh, in requests anyway, and the less data that the page has to worry about rendering, uh, the faster your page will be. So a short little snippet there that uh, helps you um, and hopefully makes your pages run a bit faster. I've also made sure that I've linked to both the webinar um, and the blog post in the comments uh, or in the description section of the video um, if you're looking at it on YouTube, but also in the blog that accompanies it on the paulbatterson.com uh, blog website. So thank you very much and I hope you enjoyed it.